Hi there, um, welcome to this uh, latest Stouts webinar. My name is Sue McGregor and I'm going to take you through how to get the most from your data in Connect Interactive in the weeks leading up to the examination. So today we're going to, to um, look at some uh, data that you might have in Connect Interactive and we're going to look at how you might identify some of your key priorities in the sort of final push towards those examinations. Um, I'm going to show you some Key Stage 5 data today, but effectively um, it's the same at Key Stage 4. So um, hopefully if you're watching at Key Stage 4, you will still get quite a bit out of the webinar. So um, we're going to uh, talk about data just in a moment, but um, uh, effectively I'm going to use some teacher predictions uh, for my baseline for actually uh, looking at the strategies that I might adopt in the in the last three, uh, few weeks. Um, just put on the bottom there that um, we have got an associated opinion piece um, because obviously I don't want to put everything on the webinar this afternoon um, because uh, it's quite a lot of information. So um, I'm going to focus mostly on getting uh, into Connect and showing you the tools in Connect. Uh, but there is an opinion piece that's got a bit more detail on some of the, the first little bits that I am going to go through uh, just now. OK, so uh, what's your key priority? Well, I would have thought that your key priority is ultimately um, the uh, level three value added or your Alps value added score or progress eight scores. You've got an eye to those and what they're going to look like uh, when you get them uh, at the beginning of next academic year. And really um, what we're going to look at today is focusing all your energies at that at those subject outcomes. If those are um, looking nice, then your level three value added and progress eight scores should be likewise. Um, so we're looking at individual students today and targeting their achievement um, and hopefully working with all staff across the whole school or college um, to do that. So which data are you going to use to, to support you? Um, you might already have data uh, collated or you might be on the verge of getting your last set of monitoring data for your year um, 11s, year 12s, if you're doing ASs and year 13s. Um, so uh, those might be teacher predicted uh, assessed grades. We're going to look at monitoring accuracy in Connect Interactive. Um, and so a lot hinges on the fact that you uh, know how accurate your teacher predictions are and that you're a little bit down the road of making sure that there's consistency in those teacher predicted grades. If not, that, that takes a while to develop. Uh, if not, then this webinar will hopefully sort of start you off on that process and um, look at your, your quality assurance as you go through the various different academic years from this point onwards. Uh, it might be that you have PPE. Uh, what are those pre-public examinations? It's a pixel term if you're a pixel school, um, but it's basically um, raw results that you might have from some uh, examinations, mock examinations effectively, uh, that you've done with students uh, at this time of the year or earlier in the year. Um, first thing to sort of ask is how how much your quality assurance has 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 had an impact on those uh, teacher assessed grades. Um, so as if you're SLT listening um, right now, so have you uh, managed that process of quality assuring your teacher predicted grades with your subject leaders? Um, are they being asked for evidence to back those predictions up? We'll have a look uh, at some data in Connect and you'll see some patterns of over predicting and under predicting um, and so having a culture where you're asking for evidence to back those predictions up is really powerful in making sure that you're not going to get any surprises at the end of the uh, results day um, data collection. Um, again looking at the monitoring accuracy and we'll cover this when we go into connect but it's sort of, have you got enough historical data to be able to make judgments on how accurate individual subject leaders and subject teachers are uh, in terms of their predicting uh, data that they're putting into your system? 
So I'm going to rattle through this, but some uh, priorities that you might want to think about um, if you're a member of SLT uh, sitting listening to this. And it's really about sort of winning hearts and minds and uh, motivational leadership. And in the opinion piece, uh, we've put more uh, detail in there about what we mean by that. But are you visible? Are you running motivational assemblies with your year groups um, and um, making sure that they're uh, on track with their revision, that they're feeling positive and 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 really uh, instilling that can-do culture with your with your students. Um, are you doing the same with your parents? Uh, are they on board? Are you uh, involving them? Are you talking to them? And are you in and out of classrooms? If you're uh, if you have a sixth form, are you in sixth form areas? Are you going into sixth form classrooms? Are you eleven classrooms? Are you making sure that your teachers, that your staff are feeling supported by you, that they've got the right resources um, within reason um, to ensure that those students are getting all the support and all the, the final push that they need to get over those lines? Um, I've talked about quality assuring data, but that's really important in terms of um, making sure that teachers are aware of what they're being asked to uh, predict and how they're being asked to make those judgments uh, so that you're not getting any surprises on results day uh, and you're backing and, and teachers are able to back that up with evidence. Um, we're going to look at the year group analysis in Connect Interactive but um, and I will talk more about that as we go in and go through that but effectively what I'm saying is are you using Connect Interactive to the full extent with the year group that you're targeting, but also with your staff, you know, are they knowledgeable enough about Connect Interactive and what it can do and what you want them to do uh, with the analysis in terms of um, uh, making sure that they're they're picking out the right key people and the right key areas to, to focus on in the next few weeks. Um, and effectively uh, to, to enable them to do that. So who are your, your key students who are gonna make the difference? Have you got students who are underperforming? Um, are they in line, performing in line with their target grades or their minimum expected grades? And have you got a culture uh, within and across your staff of looking at individuals in Connect Interactive and then forming impact plans uh, coming out of that. We will look at the student performance overview and talk more about that in Connect. Um, but effectively, it's about using it to get to the right kids who you, you're going to make that difference with. Um, and on that note, uh, I'm going to take you through how you might set up some uh, key comparison groups so that you can look at uh, any gaps and that's uh, uh, obviously important at key stage four and key stage five. Uh, we'll look at some disadvantaged uh, comparisons, some gender comparisons um, and making sure that you are aware again that you're not in for any surprises, that you're focusing your resources on the right uh, groups of people and the, and the right um, uh, students. Um, Skill mastery uh, clearly is important and um, as a head of department, as a subject leader, that, that should be one of the key priorities. Uh, I'm coming to subject leader priorities in a moment, but um, is, it, is it embedded in lessons that um, students are being taught what command words uh, mean, how to answer different questions involving different command words? Do they know what an A grade answer looks like or a, a grade seven answer? Um, so are they getting that modeling from their subject teachers? And again, if you're, if you're visible and you're, you're popping in and out of classrooms, it's very, uh, very quick to get a, a, an overview of whether that culture is, is sort of pervading through your students and through different lessons across, across your school and across your college. Um, the other skill mastery uh, uh, tool at your disposal is to actually um, have subject teachers walk students through uh, uh, exam papers, uh, talking about timing and how they might tackle an exam paper um, and using past papers as an example to um, build confidence with your students in that area. Uh, 
setting clear timelines um, sounds um, very straightforward, but um, ha have all, all teachers got a, a good understanding of when you expect content to be finished? Um, because Easter's late this year, and um, I would suggest that possibly right now you would want content to have been completed so that for the rest of the time in the in the lead up to the exams, you're really focused on revisiting uh, for impact uh, that sort of knowledge and content, but also almost more importantly uh, during this time is the skills that students need to have mastered to access those questions and looking at model answers and um, you know uh, doing that that sort of skill mastery. Um, that all of that together will ensure that you're making best use of resources that's staff time um, that's a timetable um, construction as you lead into the exams so looking at how you're reconstructing the timetable uh, when the exams start for example um, whether you've got uh, revision sessions that require additional resource uh, different rooming, um, that all, all those uh, different resources. Um, if you've done your homework and you've got those key students and those key groups of, of students um, targeted and, and, and set out, then obviously your resources are going towards uh, the, in the right place. And then don't forget about um, your stretch and challenge. So um, if you're doing fine grades, for example, or have you got a group of students who, if with a little bit more push, they might potentially move up to the next grade? Um, are you looking at your high attaining students? Again, we'll look at those in Connect in a moment. Um, are, you, are you absolutely sure that that top uh, band of students that you've got are making the best progress? As a subject leader then, let me just run through those. Similar. Um, I'll just pop those on um, to the uh, to your SLT. If you're a subject leader listening to this, then all of those things are clearly important for you uh, in terms of a departmental or a subject level, ensuring that all of your teachers are quality assured, their, their predictions are quality assured, that you're working together in Connect Interactive to look at um, key marginal students, uh, looking at any gaps within your subject area. Are your um, teachers uh, finished delivering their content? So are they able to now focus on skill acquisition and access to questions, modeling answers? Um, are you making sure that all of your resources are being pushed in the right directions? And again, are you looking at those stretch and challenge, whether it be uh, fine grades, uh, students who you've given um, uh, a stretch grade to at the top of their grade who could potentially move to the next one or your high ability student. And then your head of years ha ha have got very important role to play at this time of the year. Again, very key in motivational leadership with parents, with being visible around the school or college, with, you know, just walking past students or in, in, in certain areas of the school and saying, come on, you can do it, and motivational assemblies. Um, again, working uh, in the student performance overview in Connect Interactive is key uh, to look at who your key students are. And if you've got students uh, who are across the board underperforming, then your head of year might have the uh, ultimate accountability and responsibility for driving uh, through uh, the um, improvement in progress for those uh, students. Um, again, gap analysis to uh, support the subject uh, strand um, and, uh, and resources if your head of year has um, that sort of uh, uh, ownership across your school or college to ensure that resources are being um, put in the right places. And there's your stretch and challenge again. Right, um, I'm gonna, as I said, look at some year 13 data in Connect Interactive, but the same principles apply at key stage four. So if you bear with me, I'm just going to exit this uh, PowerPoint. And I am going to pop into Connect Interactive. Okay, here we go. 
Um, okay, so I'm looking at year 13, as I said, and I'm going to start in the student performance overview uh, area because we've said so much about it. So um, I've got a March uh, monitoring point for year 13, and that's the uh, monitoring point that we're going to look at when we pop in here. So 140 students in my year group. Um, I can filter by tutor groups talking about key staff. Um, and they can do any of the following um, uh, pieces of analysis with uh, their two T's uh, uh, in the same as uh, a head of sixth or raising standards leader or deputy head or assistant head for responsible for uh, key stage five. So um, what have I got here? My whole year group, and these are their teacher predicted grades for um, the final uh, push towards the exams. So I'm looking at red being um, on target or above target. Pink is um, on or above. Um, sorry, pink is the lower of two split grades. Gray here would be one below. So I'd start to be a little bit concerned and I'd be very concerned about any blue at this stage because that means that they're at least two grades below their minimum expected. So, um, I am going to um, put on uh, a comparison here uh, j just for a moment, and I'm going to use my student performance groups, and I'm going to start there. So um, look at my different groups that I've got available to me. Um, if I apply those, and then we just talk uh, through some of them. So I've got above target in all subjects. So these are uh, the 19 students, not a huge number. Um, who my subject staff have said, um, yep, doing really well, great job, keep going. Um, so obviously it's a motivational one, making sure that they've got everything that they need and that they've got the, the motivation and the praise necessary to, to keep them going. Um, on or above, same, I've got 53 students. So um, those are students who are pink or red across all of their subjects, looking nice again bit of motivation uh, and keeping going with those. OK, so now I've got um, a below target in any subject. So I've got 48 students who have a blue or a grey in, in one subject. So I guess um, these are your key subjects uh, for, uh, sorry, these are your key students where this, the subject lead or the subject teacher is going to be your first port of call. So my question to the subject uh, staff would be, did you know they were underperforming in just your subject? Um, and have they got a plan, an impact plan uh, in order to um, try and uh, raise achievement in, in that subject. If I want to get a flavor for just how many I might be talking about in any particular subject, I'm just going to isolate the biologists for a moment by clicking and dragging into that blue box. So what I've now got is I've got seven students um, in that category who are below in any subject, but you can see four of them are biologists. All right. So the biology department's uh, quite a key department in making sure that, you know, those students are um, targeted in a, in a specific way to raise that achievement. If I want to know, as the biology teacher, what their uh, target might be, I can click on their name and up comes their minimum expected grade. That's a B grade. And there I have the overview of the fact that, it, yep, it is biology that they seem to be underperforming in. I can pop back through different monitoring points um, to see what uh, has been happening uh, to that student over the past few months. And you'll notice that that student in biology has increasingly been going down, down, down. Um, there's a raw mock exam result there, which is an A grade, and they're now being predicted a C. So something quite drastic has happened to that student um, in the last couple of months. So I might want to talk to that subject teacher about what that is and how we can reverse it. So to remove that subject, uh, I can just click and drag. That should take me back to the main uh, view, she says, having a blank screen. Just going to refresh that. Um, OK, so uh, oh, it's completely 
uh, refreshed in a not a helpful way. So I'm just going to repopulate my um, monitoring point. Apologies for that. And reapply my performance groups. So we were looking at below target in any one subject. And I had um, 48 of them. And I just I just picked out four that were biologists. So you can do the same for all the other subjects. Let's look at below target in two or more, because this is where your head of sixth uh, comes into play really quite um, majorly now, because two or more subjects you can see is a bit more of a mosaic pattern. So student 59 is underperforming in their sciences, uh, but getting an A in psychology. So that's really got to be coordinated by someone. But when I say someone, someone has to take responsibility for, for the coordination of that. It's nine students, but they're really key. Um, and if you look at some of the target grades, you know, A grade, the student's potential university place is in, uh, is in peril. Um, and this one, especially if we go into student 59, their minimum expected grade is a B and they are not looking great. So someone's got to take responsibility of raising achievement there um, and um, making sure that there's a coordinated effort between different subject teachers. So I'm suggesting that that might be your head of year. Um, now, below target in all subjects, this is quite 11 students who, if you have any in this category, I suspect their names are not going to be news to you. And again, I would expect that they would have uh, different uh, kinds of intervention plans in place and hopefully they've been in place for some time because those are obviously students who are um, very worrying indeed so you can see no red at all and um, the head of year is uh, effectively going to have to do uh, a bit of coordination across subject leaders subject teachers tutors uh, and potentially parents um, alongside the student themselves themselves and really having some critical conversations with them over the next few weeks to get them back on track. So um, that's the um, student uh, performance group. Just to make you aware that, um, just in case you hadn't seen it, that right up at the top there's an export to Excel um, button and if you export to Excel with that performance comparison on there then you will um, get uh, that as a filter in Excel and you'll be able to manipulate it if you uh, if you need to um, do any additional uh, work with that. Um, in this student performance overview, if you had, um, let me just show you, if you had some key stage four data, there's a GCSE English Maths level five um, performance group in there. And I'll just show you the categories because these are obviously quite key in terms of your key marginal students if you are, um, uh, responsible for key stage four overall attainment. So those are quite key for bringing up your key marginals um, who are not getting fives in English uh, and or in maths. So please do apply that filter and, and have a look at those uh, because um, I would imagine they're pretty high up on your subject leader maths and English intervention um, strategies if they're in not met in either or the other two groups. So, um, so that's the student performance um, overview. Now I'm going to go back and I'm now going to go into um, the subjects. Um, I would imagine, oops, I don't know why that's not loading. Uh, I would imagine um, around about now you are um, having some critical conversations with uh, your uh, subject leaders. So if you've done a, a data uh, drop in the last uh, couple of weeks, then um, I would imagine that you've got some meetings um, set up that are um, you and uh, each individual um, head of head of subject to look at critical um, students analysis uh, within their department. So let's just look at the subject overview. So these are three monitoring points. I've got some raw marks from January, then January predicted grades and March predicted grades. So I can get a trend line um, and look at what's been happening across the year since these um, this data went in. So um, I might be a little bit concerned about biology here. Look, you've got a grade seven, 
uh, from the raw mocks. That was raw uh, outcomes from those mocks. Then they predicted a two on the back of that, and now they're predicting a grade four. So I'm going to ask a question of what is going on. You know, show me evidence for how that uh, 0 0.88 grade four is going to come about because that's certainly no, not where you are in January. So if we um, go into biology, we can start to have these conversations with the subject leader of biology in front of us. If you are the subject leader of biology, then you might be a little bit worried and you might want to look at your two teaching sets there. So you've got a blue teaching set and a red teaching set. There they are. One to grade seven and one to grade two. So you might have uh, concerns over, gosh, grade seven, what can we do to raise achievement there? It's actually in line with the raw mock grade. This one is nowhere near the raw mock grade. So you might have different concerns on, ouch, you know, how you how are you arriving at that prediction? So let's just have a look at the, the gap analysis, which you're uh, seeing for the first time here. Um, your boys seem to be doing an awful lot better than your girls, according to this predicted data. And in fact, the mock backs that up. So you have got a, a gender split, a gender gap in biology, which I'm hoping your biology department are aware of and that they're doing some intervention with those girls to try and raise achievement, which they're potentially going to say to you, yes, we have done intervention and it's had that impact obviously you're going to ask for evidence to back that up um, because your girls are actually slightly higher, achieve more higher, gosh, they're slightly uh, higher prior attainment than the boys have. You've also got a bit of a gender gap, uh, sorry, a disadvantage gap. So again, you might be a little bit concerned about those five students who are disadvantaged and what the biology department are doing about those. So we can then look at the students in biology. Let me just sort by prior attainment because um, that will give us a feel for how my high prior attainers are doing. Not too bad up here. And then it starts to fall apart a little bit down here. Look, there's a few Bs and some Cs coming into biology. Um, and then as we go down, we've got a varying sort of pattern uh, down at the lower end of the prior attainment. So um, what you can then do is just have uh, some conversations with the, the head of biology or the subject teacher of biology about some of those individual students. I'm going to put the what if on um, because that's going to allow me to say, well, how does the biology department get to a grade three? Four students by one grade. And then I can start to look at who those four students are that I might target. And what I might want to do is I might want to do some modeling of B grade. Does everyone in my class know what a B grade looks like? Because a lot of these Bs are not getting Bs. You see what I mean? And just by focusing on some B grade uh, modeling, I might be able to raise some of those uh, students who are currently just sitting underneath the B grade. So I might do that through uh, skill acquisition, through uh, modeling um, past paper answers, et cetera, et cetera. So hopefully that makes sense. Um, I'm just going to um, reset that. Sorry, getting confused. Um, and what I'm now going to do is go back to the um, biology overview page and just um, be a little bit Scottish and a bit pessimistic because I'm going to go into gone into the wrong set, I'm sorry. I'm going to go into this red set here, who it's where the teacher's predicting a grade two. There's no there's no gaps in this set. Um, but grade two from a mock score of eight, and look at how poorly the girls in that set did in that mock. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a quick custom group on boys and girls. And I'm going to look at my girls who are a grade two, um, but I'm going to be um, a little bit pessimistic with my girls. I'm going to put on a what if filter and those girls there, let me just look at them. Hopefully you're following me. Those are my five girls. If I'm, I've got my what if on, if I'm going to be pessimistic and say, I really don't think 
that that student is going to get an A and that one's not going to get an A star and that one's likely to get a D. So you see what I'm doing, I'm being really pessimistic. But just moving a few grades there and my girls have already dropped to a grade five. So I can use the what if tool in two different ways, if you see what I mean, to get um, some answers to some questions or to do some modeling with the subject teacher to say, look, come on now, really? Is, is this really what these um, students are going to achieve in the final exam when they haven't shown any indication of this up to now? So hopefully that makes sense. Let's get rid of that. Now, um, if you have got any custom groups that you've added, your data manager has added to Connect, for example, SEND or uh, Feeder School, if you're a sixth form college, then if you go into the comparison groups, you will be able to um, select them there and you will be able to add those uh, to look at uh, gap analysis. Uh, you, your custom group selection allows you to actually um, add more than one comparison. So, for example, if I wanted to look at my white British boys, for example, I would add a gender, uh, oops, sorry, male. There we go. And then I would add an additional comparison group of ethnicity. Uh, she says not being able to find her white British doesn't matter. Um, just uh, uh, giving you an example, um, add a group. I can add additional comparison groups. I just want to look at those. I know those are not white British. Um, let's just change that. Um, apply that comparison. And I can see um, the groups are, appear on my thermometer so that I can then look at any particular group that I want to um, within um, uh, Connect Interactive. Hopefully that makes sense. Um, OK, so I'm going to go back right back to the beginning. and I'm going to look at the monitoring accuracy and I've been picking on biology. I'm a biology teacher, so I'm allowed to. Um, and I've been worried about some of the predictions in biology. So I might just want to pop in here and um, look at some predicting accuracy over the past uh, couple of years. So I'm going to keep that comparison on, that grade point, sorry. And I'm just going to add my exam grade point from last summer. So I just want to see how my biology department have been predicting. So they're predicting a grade four. And last summer, they got a grade three. So it's it's slightly more optimistic so i might be asking questions of them saying well, you're predicting accuracy wasn't was it it wasn't quite right last year um you were grade six and now you're saying a grade um four now where am i getting that evidence for to say you're predicting accuracy wasn't quite right last year i can play around with these grade point selectors i can take that one off there's my um last year's exam data and if I just find there, this 18 MP4, I know it says May, but that was the last set of data I asked for um, before the, those students last year went into the exam. And look at biology, see how over predicting um, they were. So I've got some reservations on the biology, depart the biology department's ability to predict. So that's why I'm keeping a really close eye on them this year, because I'm not convinced by their predicting accuracy. You know, economics would be in the same boat. Geography, again, same. Um, physics, uh, same. So I've got some concerns over predicting accuracy, if that hopefully that makes sense. Um, and then I've got some some departments where they're you know, almost spot on. OK, so you can fiddle about with those two grade point selectors and do any kind of comparison that you want. Um, this in-year trend, uh, if I uh, add um, some, um, I'm going to just move these around a little bit, some uh, grade point analysis here. So I'm going to put uh, the uh, January raw mocks, the January predict, and I'm going to put the latest, the March. I've just got to move these around a little bit to get them in the right order. OK, so last summer, January mock, January predict, and then the March predict. I should get a trend line now. OK, 
So look at biology. That is not a graph that you necessarily want to see. OK, uh, you want to see much more of a, a straight line um, and um, you, you don't want it fluctuating that much. So let's pop into biology and have a little look. OK, so there's last year's grade, grade six. They uh, raw mocks are predicting a seven, which is fairly in line with that grade six, and then jumping up to a grade two, and now they're coming back down to a grade four. So you're, I think, within your rights to ask the question of how come. If I click on that teaching set, I can superimpose, wow, I can superimpose those teaching sets, and this person here, or, or teacher, I know I've got two teachers here, but um, Sometimes your, your classes are taught by more than one teacher, I know. But this teacher here seems to be being relatively realistic compared to last year's outcomes. This one, uh, not so much. So you're probably, again, going to focus on um, 13b2 and ask some key questions on what on earth is going on in 13b2. So hopefully that gives you an idea of the monitoring. Um, last bit to show you, um, we talked about the most stable. So I'm just going to build a custom report in um, Connect Interactive, and I'm going to do the banded viability. Um, my monitoring points that I want um, are there. I'm just going to add last year's exam results onto the um, first one. There we go. So I've got four, uh, sorry, three monitoring points across current year 13 and last summer's exam. And I'm going to create that. And what I'm looking for in A level in GCSE, it's the top in GCSE, it's the top table. In A level, it's the middle one. So this is just all of my prior attainment uh, students in bands, and how they are doing relative to the national database on average across their subjects. Okay, um, and my high ability students are not doing that well, and they did not do that well uh, last summer. So I probably got an eye on those and an eye here saying things don't look like they're improving that much, particularly, excuse me, particularly not from the mocks either. So again, I might, as a head of year, have a real drive and a real focus on those four students and those 12 students in terms of what subjects are they doing and what can I do to support them in um making sure that they're actually uh, uh, heading for better progress results than that, if that makes sense. And just as a reminder, I can see who these students are, she says, losing control of her mouse, uh, by popping back into that student overview, putting on the prior achievement filter, which I think is there. Those are my top four students, okay? Now, that student there is probably um, contributing to that top band being um, a little bit uh, reduced and the fact that a lot of them they're all A star A megs and they're all A's rather than A stars so it might be a push towards the A star is in order and then as I jump down into that second band down you can see that mosaic pattern starting to uh, appear there and I'm looking across and it's a variety of subjects. There's a few chemistry, there's a physics there. Um, and, you know, I'm going to then start talking to those subject leaders about that. So um, that's Connect. Let me just pop back into the um, PowerPoint just to finish off. Um, if you uh, are looking for some more support and guidance, then as always, there's uh, a few different areas for you to go uh, and find out some more information. That's our Alps, Alps cycle. Uh, here we are at sort of phase one of this final push term. Um, and we're looking at that sort of final push webinar towards uh, the end, towards the examinations. Um, now, we have got uh, some staff checklists, which hopefully will help you um, on uh, just revise some of those questions that I've asked and some of those areas that I've been to. Um, if you look on the Connect homepage at that help, just pop into that help section. Um, I'm actually going to take you to the knowledge base so you can get into it that way or you can pop up that help button there and um, just in the search bar, pop in staff checklists. Those are the four that come up. 
okay and that's the slt one uh in terms of monitoring points so those are some of the questions there that i've talked you through in this webinar okay i hope that's been useful um and if you do have any queries please do, do just uh email uh the uh training at alps education i'll be happy to chat through with you or, or any of my education colleagues uh will be able to uh, chat through any queries or concerns that you have hopefully that's been helpful and thanks for listening okay bye now